Hello everybody and welcome to another time lapse painting. Thank you so much for joining me. And we are exploring my new painting called Blue Bonnets. This is what it looks like when it's done. I'm just showing you more of the details and of the texture. As you can see it's filled with lots of blue. And so we begin with just a little bit of sketching with the brush, just feeling out where I'm going to put everything. This painting was mostly inspired by seeing blue flower fields. I forgot, I think I was watching some movie or something and I remember I just paused the movie and took a picture of it. And the blue flowers were, I was like, oh, that's what I need to capture. And then I ended up going online, looking up many fields of blue flowers and the flowers that came up that I really liked were blue bonnets. So that's why I call this painting blue bonnets. And I learned that they're mostly in Texas or, you know, that area. I'm not trying to advertise Texas. I'm not trying to say anything good or bad about it. I just like blue bonnets and that's where they're from. Plus it's a fun word. It's kind of a but they're really pretty if you get to see them in real life. Definitely Google them, see what they look like. <clears throat> and I don't go for a full detailed arrangement of what each flower would look like. I'm just using abstract gestures to capture what a field of them would look like as opposed to individual flowers. Which, Because I'm here just... Really the main subject is the field itself. The hilly field, the rolling hills with filled with flowers and... And it goes in how away they stretch out for a very far distance. You just saw me finish the clouds and detail them up a little bit. I did start them with blue and I was thinking of making an overcast day but later on I'm gonna switch to a more brighter day just because you know blue is kind of a pretty heavy color, pretty relaxing color and could also make things a lot more, feel a lot more sadder if I was to have an overcast day, the blue and overcast day they definitely will create more of a just a low lower beat to tone and I'm, I think I'd rather have something a little bit more happy happening so here I am feeling a little blue but this is around the time when I realized like wait I can't do that I should definitely go with white so then I filled did a couple of layers of that filling the sky with white and I'm only showing you one of the layers I did I did a couple more I just didn't want to, you know, put them, include them in the recording. You see me just layering in the grass. I actually first just dragged the layer of modeling paste mixed with green, and then I etched into the paint itself with my brush, just drawing those little grasses that I'm gonna cover again later. You didn't see me use a cake decorator to really get in there. Before then. Before we see that, we'll just see me add like just the first beginnings of the tree, the branches, and the trunk. At first, I wasn't going to add any trees to this painting, and but then I did because I figured if if a field uh, can grow such so many blue flowers, it's probably rich enough in soil to carry trees too. So I threw some trees in there and actually threw a bunch of the smaller ones later on. You'll see me get there. And then here I'm just throwing actually a more like a little bushy bush in there. And so uh, here's the kick decorator. Now if you ever have a chance to use this, it's actually really fun to use and it's very satisfying because you can move fairly quickly. This thing has cut down on so much of the work I used to do. So before I used to use a thin round brush and scoop a glob of, of modeling paste and then use that little thin tip glob to and drag it across to create these lines but now I I so much shortened the time that it's made it it made it more fun less less because I can do it faster you know because like once I have the idea in my head of what I want to do I just want to be able to put it on paper or on canvas I guess and sometimes there's a lot of busy work that that isn't as fun as problem solving so it's like it's just like because it's mindless busy work which is fun to fill with you know music and podcasts or whatnot but 
I prefer the problem solving part a little bit more. I got that cake decorator off of the internet ordered it online. It came in about a couple of days, you know. It's just, it was. It's alright. I ended up actually buying separate tips later because they just weren't. This one, this was the thinnest one I had in the set. And I don't really plan to. Out of the large sets I, set I have, which is like, I think like 40 tips or 50 tips, I'm, I only use this one and. Two other ones, but the two other ones I actually ended up using a pliers to squeeze the tip tighter, because it's just too. It still lets the pin out too thick for certain things that I'm looking. Sometimes I just want the grass to come out or the line to come out so thin that it looks like grass, as opposed to like a. You know, it doesn't come out looking like grass basically when it's too thick. Luckily for this one, I didn't. Need it to really look like grass. I needed it to just look like kind of like the underbody or under or the stems, really, the flowers. And I went back in it at, on this little hill area. I wanted to go back in there and just fill it, fill in the gaps a little bit more because once, of course, it runs the paint dries, it loses some of the mass like a third of it maybe so then all the gaps need to be filled a little bit more and so then I can later paint in the blue bonnets but then I gotta go first into the trees now here the color I chose was a was a little was just like a, a little bit more blue or teal than the background I like I, I chose this color because I knew I was gonna paint in some red into the sky, and the red with the teal, the, or the, that like tealish color definitely mixes in really well with the red, or it creates like a nice what's it called a nice diversity of color. And then here's the background ones. I didn't use a cake decorator for the further in the distance grass grasses. I just use a fan brush with. It's bristles just kind of clumped into different sections. So I have like four tips on one fan brush. Each tip I let me do one brush stroke. <laughs> I'm not sure if I explained that too well, but if you ever use a fan brush, you'll ever you'll notice that bristles sometimes separate into separate or into groups. They'll separate themselves instead of just being one fan brush. It'll be like four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, different tips because. They clump together in different areas of the brush, but anyway. Oh, actually, I guess I did use the cake decorator. I completely forgot about this part. I don't, I don't remember doing that. I really don't remember doing that. Okay. <laughs> Here I'm going back into the trees and the brush, and the brush, just wanting to add more detail to it. probably do a much more or many more other feel of the flowers paintings later on I really enjoy this it's a little bit of, it's a quite a step away from what I usually do which is seascapes and here I'm doing these little trees in the background just there you know the ones in the distance if you're wondering what I'm thinking what I'm doing or what kind of plan I have for the trees I usually try to think of like one grouping or one branch as like a abstract brush stroke and then draw it in as opposed to just drawing each little leaf for the farther ones so I just kind of try to capture the essence of a tree as opposed to just be detailed so here I'm adding more details again to the grass This painting definitely took me a good amount of time. I think I spent maybe at least 16 hours just painting, without any planning or any, you know, just staring at it. Sometimes I spend some time staring at it, just 
or taking a picture of it and then looking at it really small or so you need those kind of moments just to look at it and just see what you want to add take away I'm just adding a little bit more foliage a little bit more diversity here just kind of squiggling in there I know I'm gonna cover it so I'm not too concerned with how proper it looks in the field of course I am a little bit concerned obviously but I'm not too worried here I am adding some blue just want to I want to get the ground darker so it contrasts with the green and then I move to the bonnets themselves this was probably the most fun part of the whole painting I mean pretty sure you could have guessed that I'm not sure well, one thing I'm not sure if you maybe I missed was me coloring the sky as you can see how like the red kind of and the yellow kind of will contrast with the trees I want you to picture them not being there and then kind of see how that makes the composition just a little better and gives it more depth because right oh, most of the green is going to be covered up by the blue so I have to I still want to have more green in there just to balance it out give it a little bit more harmony also kind of give the composition a little bit more like push so I take your because it takes your eyes from the left it easily takes your eyes from the left and throws you to the right because of the road this part I just sort of squeeze them in there just as many as I can and also try not to let it trying not to get the Globs to stick together too much because if they stick together, then they create like a mega glob, and that's not a flower. <laughs> they had to go, and that's why, like, I go back into the background ones was because I separate, I did a lot more distance in between each flower, so I could come back and add new ones later. There's something very like almost relaxing depending on what color you're working with and working with blue is really nice. I really like that color. I mean I'm sure almost everybody does but I guess the more I'm painting for so long now and I've been doing this for such a long time that I notice myself like different moods depending on what colors I use and I never even thought that would be happening to me because usually I think I'm like oh I don't react but it definitely affects the mood just even you know you don't at first I thought it was other things I thought I was, I was like maybe what I was eating but I usually eat the same thing all the time so I've noticed maybe in the past like five months that the blue was or the colors excuse me not just the blue but all the colors how they all affect me differently and then also how they combine for example create the different moods and before when I was painting I never really thought about the mood colors created but now because they affect me so much more I can definitely like understand some of the things artists say because before I used to listen to you know other artists talk about their work and I would be a uh, I don't know I just I, I find it weird that people would say would say things like oh this color brings out the the joy and something you know they would just kind of sound very esoteric in their verbiage but now I've after painting for a while I'm like okay I kind of get it now it's, it's, it's I'm still a little bit 
feel like I'm still a little bit more practical in my thinking when it comes to painting. But I, could, I get the mood. I get, I get it. I just wanted to add some gold here, by the way. If you were wondering why, it's because it's a very good contrast with blue. And then these final layers, I just added... Um, what's it called? I added undertone, and then here's the final product. Yeah, the blue undertone is just there to make the background... Or not the background, but the ground itself that the flowers are on darker. And then makes the blue lighter. So then it pops out more. So, you know, it also makes it look like there's shadows there. But anyway, take care.